So for today's event, uh, we will actually be diving into the strategic importance of volunteer management and how to strengthen volunteer management in our agencies. We'll be demonstrating how we can use the volunteer management maturity matrix or VMM matrix for short to do so. So you'll see on the slide now, uh, here's a brief overview of how we're going to spend today's session together. So we'll start off by having uh, New Hope Community Services share about the strategic importance of volunteer management and their own experience in developing robust volunteer management practices. Yeah, following that, we'll actually share with you how you can strengthen volunteer management practices in your agency by using the VMM matrix. And then we'll address as many of the questions as possible in the Q&A. So uh, the, the Q&A will be done via pigeonhole. So uh, do uh, if you have any questions throughout the session, please uh, send them in uh, via this QR code over here. Or else, uh, if you would like, uh, our colleagues will also be sending in the pigeonhole link directly onto the Zoom chat. So feel free to access it there if you prefer as well. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, feel free uh, to just uh, add any questions uh, that comes to your mind. So we we'll do our best to get you everything. Okay. So uh, to kickstart today's session, uh, we actually have the CEO of New Hope Community Services, uh, Pastor Andrew Ku. So Pastor Andrew will share about uh, the strategic importance of volunteer management and New Hope's own experience in developing robust volunteer management practices. So uh, let's invite Pastor Andrew. Pastor Andrew, please. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you uh, so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank NCSS for giving me the opportunity to share the importance of volunteer management practices, how we partner with volunteers to grow the organization to help us build capacity and capability. Uh, by the way, I am no expert. Uh, my colleague, Sing Ling, uh, uh, is a champion volunteer manager here. Um, but I do like to share my own uh, journey uh, growing the organizations. So I started New Hope Community Services as a volunteer myself for three years before I served as the executive director. So in New Hope, we intentionally partner with the three Bs, public, private, and people to form communities of support to fulfill our vision and missions. So the work cannot be done by the full-time staff alone, and we will never have the enough resources. Now, to make this sharing easier for everyone to remember, I prepared the three arrows that represent our journey with volunteer management so far. The first arrow is uh, resourceful. I'm a big believer in volunteers. As a growing organization, we don't have the resources to employ enough staff to achieve what we want to do. And uh, going forward, I believe that it will be more challenging uh, in terms of getting enough resources. And I know that this is an issue many other SSAs face too. We may not have the resources, but we definitely can be resourceful. Um, we are still multiplying our manpower by intentionally reaching out to volunteers with the right skill set. So uh, let me share two stories of how volunteers have helped to build our organizations. So during the past two years of COVID, we grew very quickly to meet the many critical needs on the ground. And it happened very fast. We needed to ensure that New Hope stay on course to its missions and visions and chart proper plans for our future. So we connected with JP Morgan, who still based volunteers provided us with very valuable support. Every Wednesday, consultants from JP Morgan met with our work management team to provide input on strategic planning. We were working on digitalization and organization development transformation and they offer us an important corporate perspective. 
They also gave us advice on marketing and developing the risk management framework. In fact, they had very strong team, two teams that came on board to help us over a few months period. With their help, we learned how to increase our efficiency, productivity, and effectiveness. If we were to convert the time and effort that they gave us into monetary costs, I, would, I think it would have been worth millions. Another example is the setting up of the KS Cafe, a social enterprise at our retreat center. None of our full-time staff were involved in this. We engaged our volunteers who set up our kitchen and cafe. We call them our super volunteers. Until today, whenever we see them, right, we call them, you are our super volunteers. From the design, choosing the, the equipment, kitchen equipment, planning the food menu, and getting the licenses to, uh, needed to operate the cafe. All these were done by volunteers led by a board member who has 40 years of experience in the FMP. None of us full-time staff, including myself, were involved in that project. You know? This is why volunteers are so important to us. There are many ways um, one can serve as a volunteer, from shelter, painting, and cleaning to supporting our digitalization processes. And so when you connect with the right hearts and hands, an organization will never truly lack resources. Maybe I add on another story. Uh, we have another super volunteer who has been serving um, the last maybe 13 years. She's a ID interior designer. And all our center, uh, all the layout, design, all done by her. You know, we never pay her a single cent. And she has been very passionately uh, serving with us until today. So again, if we were to convert the, her expertise, the work that she has done uh, in New Hope, and the expenses that she has put in, you know, is going to worth a lot more, you know, a lot, a lot. So uh, we thank God that we have all these super volunteers. Now, the second um, part that I, will, I, will, I want to share is, uh, is reflective. You know? How did we incorporate this strategy and culture of having a strong relations with volunteers. This is where our next hour reflective comes in. At New Hope, the board and the management team see the importance of volunteerism and volunteer management. They know that we are not maximizing the full potential of the organize, organization when we do not have volunteers with us. To demonstrate this belief to staff, our leadership intentionally reflected with our actions. Our board president, led by example by serving as a volunteer himself, very actively, he took up classes with Jumping Singapore, became a certified jumping fitness instructor himself, conducted jumping classes to our clients or residents at one of our shelters. To highlight the importance of volunteer management, as a pillar in New Hope, we are now looking into setting up a volunteer management subcommittee as one of our board subcommittees in New Hope. This ensures that volunteer management will definitely be a part of our strategic plan moving forward and ensure we practice good governance with it. Have you heard this quote? And I love this. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. 
what this quote is saying is that you may have a fantastic strategy in place, but without the right culture where it can be implemented well, the strategy will be wasted. So it is then has to be very intentionally that we build a right culture. So to build a culture of working closely with volunteers, we are intentional about letting staff experience how much, how much values volunteers can bring to our organizations. So for example, we intentionally invited the JP, JP Morgan's consultant to sit in our management meetings and be part of the inner workings of New Hope. So they get to see all the our strength, our weaknesses, you know, whatever that is happening, they, they will know because they, they, they were part of the management meeting every week for two years. We invited them to our leaders and planning retreat, meet up with all other colleagues, the leaders, the leaders in New Hope. This gives uh, our leaders a chance to personally engage with these skill-based volunteers and to work with them. I know that inviting volunteers to management or board meetings is not something every organization is comfortable doing it. But doing this let us build trust with our high value volunteers, such as those consultants from JP Morgan. And when our staff see our volunteers in action, then they get to see the real impact of partnering with volunteers how it can help them in their work and also help new folk go beyond what we set out to do. Finally, the last R stands for relevance. The social service sector is constantly evolving and we have to learn, we have learned how to flow with it. One event I look forward to attending each year is the NCSS Summit. This is where I keep up to date with the latest general developments and the current trend in the social service sector. What does this have to do with new hope and volunteer management? Along with new direction in the sector, we recognize the needs of our beneficiary will continue changing, especially in the middle of this pandemic. To make sure that we stay relevant, we conduct regular cell evaluation on the state of our organization. This is like regular personal health check, checkup, which we are encouraged to do it annually. Over the years, we have gradually improved our volunteer management practices by implementing initiatives such as the volunteer management framework and volunteer continuity plan. These are put in place to ensure that our volunteers are well taken, taken care of. Now, when I look at what is volunteer management, it's really about building relationships with them so that they can continue to work with us. And many of them have become very good friends to us. The recently released volunteer management maturity metrics, BMM metrics, who will be a great help in this area. New Hope existed in its development as part of the volunteer management capability development project with uh, ENY. And we have actually already tried out this tool ourselves. This tool will be useful in helping anyone who manages volunteers to conduct regular checks of their current volunteer management practices and also to identify areas where they can grow in. And New Hope volunteers play a pivotal role in what we do to enable sustain volunteerism with positive volunteer experience. It is important for charities to continually strengthen their volunteer management capabilities and have a robust 
volunteer management practices and processes. If you would like to get started with the BMM matrix, sure, NCSS will be sharing more about it in, this, in the segment after this. I hope uh, this sharing, simple sharing, has been useful for you. Um, it inspires you. And I wish you all the best in your volunteer management journey. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pastor Andrew, for the heartfelt sharing. I think all of these uh, volunteer stories really stick with us. Uh, at least it sticks with me. Yeah, and I particularly like when you said that like culture is strategy for breakfast. <laughs> that's, that's quite a striking image, yeah. yeah I, I feel that Pastor Andrew's uh, sharing really captures three key points, right? Firstly, how important it is for agencies to embed their volunteer management strategy as part of their organizational strategy. Uh, secondly, the key role that leaders play in driving this volunteer management strategy and developing a volunteer friendly culture, which is really important to make the strategy work out, right? And finally, how important it is for agencies to keep up with emerging trends by continually um, improving their volunteer management practices. So uh, I believe that some of you have questions to ask about new folks sharing. Yeah, so I'd like to invite you to send in any questions that you may have for Pastor Andrew or New Hope uh, Community Services in general into the pigeon holding so that um, our speakers, uh, Pastor Andrew and Sing Ling, can share more with you later on. Okay, so now that we've seen how important volunteer management is, uh, how then can we continuously improve our volunteer management practices? Yeah, for that, I'll pass my time over to my colleague Ken, who will be guiding us through um, how we can use the BMM matrix to strengthen volunteer management capabilities in our agencies. Ken, please. Okay, thank you, Zingyi, and uh, thank you, Pastor Andrew, for your heartfelt sharing of how volunteers and volunteer management really supports the plan of New Hope. And now may I share about how you can strengthen your agency's volunteer man management capabilities through the NCSS Volunteer Management Maturity Matrix, uh, short for VMM Matrix. But before I go into the details, let me use this frame to really explain the purpose of the VMM Matrix. Now, if there's three aspects to helping any organization to build capabilities, one of them will be people. So they are your social workers, program staff, HR and finance staff, fundraisers, many, many more. And of course, volunteer management staff. And to do better, people go for training to improve their competencies. Organization will recruit the right talents for their need. The second aspect is technology. Okay, there are simply tools to help staff and volunteers, whether in terms of automating processes to complete tasks faster. But last but not least is processes. Okay, processes include SOPs, policies, staff instruction, documentation, handbooks, etc., etc. They will guide staff and volunteers on the work to be done. What are the work? Where are they being done? Who to do them? How to do them? And when to do them? So the processes is the most important part of why the volunteer management maturity matrix will help you. I know in volunteer management, there are many processes to do and improve. So how do you know where to start? The VMM matrix will help you. The VMM matrix was launched at the recent team fiesta uh, at Bedok Carnival by DPM Hain. Uh, the event was organized by SGCAS Volunteer Center at Bedok for the Bedok locale. So special thanks to Philo's Community Services for helping us uh, in the launch. So what is the VMM matrix? Okay, the VMM matrix is a digital self-assessment tool. Uh, it allows your agency to understand the strengths and gaps in your volunteer management practices. You will also receive recommendation on the relevant resources to address those gaps. The matrix will also aim to develop sectoral benchmark so for all agencies so that we can better grow the sector together. You will know that the matrix also complements the organizational health framework for social services, of which VM is part of the people domain and includes three strategic assessment questions. So for those who have done the OHFFS assessment, the VMM matrix is a more in-depth assessment of your volunteer management health in your agency. And you can see here, it covers the entire range of the volunteer management framework through seven key areas, organizational culture, organizational readiness, volunteer recruitment and selection, onboarding and training, engagement experience, review of volunteer management, as well as collaboration. There are 35 practices for assessment through these seven key areas. So if you are new to volunteer management 
or you don't know where to uh, tackle in your framework, use the volunteer management maturity matrix. Okay, the matrix also anchor on four, set, four levels models. So your practices can be at level one, level two, three, or four. At level one, it basically means uh, the practice is not there or it's practiced inconsistently. For example, some staff or centers may be practicing, uh, maybe administering volunteer surveys, while other staff and centers may not. Okay, so this is where uh, we need to start to improve that practice so that uh, it can reach level two, which is practice more consistently. But at level two is also not formally defined and documented. Several agencies will be at this level and they can be achieving great outcomes with great people, okay? But the outcomes may not continue because if there are changes in the staff managing the volunteers. This is where we will encourage the practice to move to level three to improve by being practiced consistently as well as defining and documenting it. And staff are actively reminded and informed to implement those practices. So when you reach here, you'll be achieving sustained good outcome. And level three is the desired level that we encourage agency to aspire to be at. And then after level three, you can continue to improve this practice to better meet the future needs and trends, which is level four. Level four is everything at level three, including reviewing and improving the practice from time to time. When you reach here, you'll be ensuring that the good outcomes are not only sustained, but they are scalable and constantly adapting to meet future needs and trends. So using the volunteer survey as an example again. So in the past, uh, surveys are probably done hard copy. Now it's most likely done online, Google Forms and all that. Maybe in the future, you don't even do run survey and you can still get the data, okay? So if you reach level four for this practice, it basically means that you are taking time to review this from time to time so that you can tap on new technology or whatever not to improve. The VMM matrix also supports your journey along the refresh social service sector strategic trust. For key trust one, with the VMM matrix, you will strengthen your volunteer management to better serve your service users. For key trust two, you can then better engage volunteer to expand manpower capacity and tap on their skills to improve organizational health. For key trust three, with strengthened volunteer management, you will be building greater collaboration with partners and volunteers. And last but not least, with key trust four. And as I mentioned about reaching level four, this would mean that your practice are going to meet new and emergent needs. And from our NCSS social service sector survey on volunteer management last year, we have seen SSAs that have volunteer management practices have said they are able to better recruit and retain volunteers than SSAs that have no volunteer management practices. So this really emphasizes the importance of establishing your practices so that you can have good outcomes. Okay, so the, I was mentioning about resources, right? So the VMM matrix also will be recommending resources relevant to your practices. So the matrix will consolidate all NCSS resources, which you are all familiar with. So for the example of maybe you are looking at a practice to improve to better train staff to engage volunteers, you will be referred the learning and development roadmap for volunteer management practitioner. We will also be looking out for publicly available community resources so that to add on to our resource list. And we'll also be scanning for overseas resources in terms of top pieces, uh, research studies, etc. So in summary, why use the VMM matrix? It will facilitate a more holistic approach to understanding your agency's volunteer management and so that you can strengthen it to achieve better outcomes. It will identify the gaps in your practices and you receive guidance on recommendation from the various resources. Lastly, it will allow your agency to understand where your practices stand in relation to the sector through benchmarking. Now, when should, it, when should you do your volunteer uh, management maturity matrix? Okay, we encourage agencies to do it on an annual basis, not only to track your progress, but also use the result in alignment with your annual VM work planning. The VMM matrix will take about 20 minutes to complete, uh, but this excludes discussion with your internal stakeholders. 
but don't worry, you can save draft anytime and come back to continue from where you left off. So there are just four simple steps to complete the, uh, the matrix. Okay, first of all, you need to assign a VM lead. Uh, likely, it will be your volunteer manager, but it can be also someone equivalent. This person needs to be familiar with the matrix, understand the 35 practices listed, and the, the definition of the four levels. Next, select your stakeholders to understand the existing practices. It's important to update and brief your uh, CEO and ED about the matrix, then identify the internal stakeholders, which can be your program staff, social workers, anyone who is important in engaging the volunteers to find out how the practices are conducted based on the four levels. Then you establish and input the most appropriate level for the VM practices. If you have many centers, and uh, you, you, you can talk to your, the staff from the different centers and aggregate the score. Uh, in cases that we have heard, some SSAs, uh, some agencies may want to uh, you know, assess based on the specific center. Uh, you can do so at the center level, but we encourage you to also uh, cross-share the best practices so as to standardize the VM practices across the entire organization. When you reach here, you have complete the VM matrix. And lastly, you receive a report and you can share the findings with your leader and the stakeholders to discuss the next step. Uh, before I go into a short demo of how to use the matrix, I would like to highlight this point that the VMM matrix should complement your outcome measurement. So we have, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, stronger volunteer management capabilities lead to stronger volunteerism outcome. So in this case, when you'll be assessing the practice in the area of reviewing volunteer management, you can at the same time try to measure your volunteer satisfaction levels. Okay, so if, if you don't have uh, a means, you can consider using the NCSS uh, volunteer engagement tool, or just also Google Form and all that. Okay, so then you can use the results from both sources, compare and use it to support your plans further. Okay, now is uh, demo time. Okay, so, uh, most of you will receive a, a link after this uh, email as well as it's on, also on our volunteer uh, VRO resource hub. It will bring you to the, uh, the VMM matrix assessment area on the online. Okay, so I won't go into details. It's everything what I said just now, uh, but uh, for those who didn't attend, uh, for your colleagues, you can uh, let them know that this is all the intros and background. I've talked about instruction just now. So uh, you can click proceed and then you'll come to this page where uh, you can fill in all the details. Uh, there's new submission for those who are doing this for the first time and continue submission if you're coming back uh, uh, after saving your draft. Okay, so like cooking show, I already uh, put in the details already. So, okay, so you just input your name, your contact email, uh, uh, name, and then here you can choose NCSS member or non-CSS member. So because we are also catering for other nonprofits and charities uh, outside the, the NCSS uh, membership. So for those who are NCSS member, you can find your, your, your name already here. And then you select whole of organization, centers, or others. So uh, yes, so, so we recommend you to select whole of organization. So, uh, okay, I'll just do a dummy. Okay, and then click next. Okay, so what do we see? Okay, so, so this is, uh, as I mentioned, seven key areas. So seven steps. Uh, then the first step will have organization cultures and all the questions for organization cultures is not much, it's only four key questions. Uh, the self-rating guide is here as well for, uh, for a refresher. So uh, as I mentioned, level one, limited, level two, level three, level four. Okay, so then you can select all the different uh, uh, levels that you have uh, internally uh, discussed and uh, find out and establish. So actually I was just referring to Pastor Andrew Sherry I think for this point where the leadership demonstrate and communicate the importance of partnering with volunteers, they, they should be level four because they are the, the point about reflecting, they take, they take time to always review their practices, their leadership. So uh, yeah, so that's just uh, making this example. Another example on, on filling up, for example, we equip our staff to be able to work effectively with volunteers through training or coaching. Okay, so if you are selecting lab, uh, level one limited, which, which will mean that, you know, maybe your staff are not trained. Maybe some center staff are trained, some center staff are not trained. If it's developing, maybe, uh, you know, the, the staff are all trained, 
Uh, but then there is no SOP or actually no training manuals actually. So after some time, you know, everything is back to square one. Uh, when it's established, maybe you have some kind of a roadmap, some kind of competency map uh, on the reasons, on the trainings and the reasons for the staff uh, in, in their training to work with volunteers and optimizing. So they are taking time to review your training from time to time in the future. So for example, last time there wasn't, you know, all this virtual volunteering. But now there is virtual volunteering. Do you see a need to actually train staff on how to engage volunteers through Zoom and other digital platform? Yes, I would say yes. Okay, so then uh, after all that, you will uh, you can click, I was mentioning, you can click save. So a token will be sent to your email and then you can come back anytime. Okay, so after you click next, 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 what you will have now, you will receive a report, okay? So the report uh, basically covers everything and a bit of background so that you don't need to revisit back the portal, everything about the matrix, uh, as well as most importantly, your result, okay? For now, we are looking at a baseline of three for, for all agencies, but uh, as we uh, gather more data from the sector, yes, this is where we'll be able to understand the reality of how uh, the, the sector uh, is doing for the different areas. It may not be three, it could be four, so then we can see how you stand in relation to the sector. And the most exciting part, I also like this part, is the recommendation. So uh, for each of the areas, you will be given the, uh, uh, the tailored recommendation according to those that maybe you have selected uh, level one or level two. So in this case, I think I've selected level one and I need to look into enlisting the support of my leadership to really demonstrate the importance of volunteers partnership to the rest of the organization. And the resources are on the right here. So uh, the VM toolkit 2.0, for those who are familiar, is really a, a lot of pages. So we have taken the effort to also point out the relevant pages. There are other resources, uh, overseas resources, even funding schemes, uh, th that those that are current, as well as, for example, see a uh, volunteer continuity plan guide, our own resources, so on and so forth. So uh, at the very end, you will get a link to go back to our resource hub. So, okay, in a nutshell, this is the demo. Uh, we are happy to guide any SSAs who wants to, uh, you know, you have, have having problem navigating the site. Okay, so thank you all for listening to me and would like to come back to this frame again. I hope you have better appreciate and understand the importance of uh, improving your processes. And we hope that the VMM maturity make, uh, the uh, VMM matrix can help you to improve your processes. As a new volunteer management staff and, and even existing one, wouldn't it be great to know what are the current processes being done, why and how to do them? As a leader of your organization, wouldn't it be great to know and be assured that your agency's volunteerism outcome will be consistent for the years ahead until you look to improving them? So I will leave you with, uh, lastly, with this quote. Uh, you can't transform something you don't understand, okay? If you don't know and understand what the current state is, how can you possibly design the desired future state? With that, thank you everyone for listening to my sharing. And now time for a quick test. Jingyi, could you pop the poll? Okay, so this is uh, some, some uh, the poll to really test your knowledge on <laughs> Maybe on my sharing, hope you remember most of it. Okay, we will let it run and later we'll show the result. So which of the following best describe an agency's achieving level three for their volunteer management practices? So I was mentioning there are four levels. Level three uh, is currently the desired level so that, yes, I cannot see the answer. Okay, are we ready to share the result? Okay, so yes, uh, correct. Lev uh, so it's number three. Okay, so it's formally defined and documented and it's constantly implemented and we actively remind and inform staff to implement the practices. Okay, uh, next question, please. Okay, uh, which of the following are benefits you will get by using the VMM matrix? This is not a trick question. 
No, it sounds like a trick question. <laughs> okay. Okay, can we share the results? Okay, thank you. So yes, it's all of the above. It's not just helping the agency to assess the gaps. Yes, that's very important. Uh, through it, you can also strengthen your capabilities and also understand you know, the robustness of your agencies in relation to the sector. Okay, uh, thank you for everyone for, for listening to me. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Ken, for guiding us on uh, this, uh, this uh, piece. And then also thanks for guiding us on how all of our agencies here can use the VMM matrix to strengthen uh, their quality management capabilities. So uh, I'm sure that many of you have questions regarding the VMM matrix or are considering the various ways uh, that you can use this tool for the unique needs of your agency. So uh, there are some questions on the pigeon hole. Uh, so do feel free to add your own and upload any of the questions that you're particularly interested in. All right, so uh, just send them in to the pigeon hole link. Uh, the QR code is on screen right now. Yeah, then we can learn together. Okay, so uh, now we're moving on to the Q&A segment. So we have three panelists joining us. Firstly, we, we have Pastor Andrew, uh, CEO of New Hope Community Services, who did an inspiring sharing at the start of the session about the importance of quality management earlier on. Secondly, we have uh, Ms. Ong Sin Ling. Sin Ling is uh, a volunteer manager at the SGCAS Volunteer Center at Creta Ayer, which is also operated by New Hope Community Services. Lastly, we have Ms. Priscilla Gunn, who is the Director of Quality Resource Optimization, VRO, uh, in NCSS. Okay, so thank you, panelists, for joining us for this panel discussion. All right, so uh, to kickstart today's Q&A segment, I would like to ask uh, both Pastor Andrew and Sing Ling, uh, given what we've heard today about the benefits of, of the VMM matrix, uh, what are your thoughts about the VMM matrix tool, actually? So maybe we start with uh, Pastor Andrew and then followed by Sing Ling. Um, the tools is to help us do better. You know? um, so, uh, without the tools, we 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 are very limited. I'm very limited to do what we are doing, and uh, with the tools, it definitely will uh, give better uh, impact in the outcome that we are looking at. So. Um, now, when I look at uh, how I started uh, New Hope, uh, we, we have very, very little resources, uh, whether it's about uh, the capabilities uh, in terms of uh, finance, uh, we have very little resources. So we have to be very resourceful. Um, and when the team is small, it's easy to manage. Uh, because I'm the champion in this, uh, um, especially when I look at my own uh, experience uh, pastoring the church. You know, the church are all volunteers. So, so I, I learned volunteer management in the church. Uh, uh, and volunteer management basically is about um, the ability to build good relationships. Uh, with people that you need their help you know, to support you. Um, so when the group is small, it's easy to do, you know, but when the, the group gets bigger, then uh, then we need the tools to help us maybe. So that's how I see uh, the importance of having such a tool to help us. And also the tools also help us to uh, do measurement, uh, do checkup, uh, health check, uh, uh, to know where we are. So I, I like uh, uh, DMM metrics, uh, uh, especially going forward uh, to uh, help grow the organizations and, and especially also going forward, I find that uh, resources will be getting more challenging. Uh, uh, I think will be very tough. Uh, so um, we must build uh, uh, build on volunteers. Uh, volunteerism become important to any SSA uh, that want to grow. 
Mm. Thank you, Master Andrew. Sing Ning, do you have anything to add? What are your thoughts about the VMM matrix? Right, so I think like what Pastor Andrew mentioned, I think the VMM matrix is somewhat like a regular health checkup. So, so it works like a regular health checkup. And, you know, we tend to associate like seeing the doctor as something that's like negative, right? A lot of people will think that, you know, I see doctor means confirm something is up, something is wrong. And we will just usually try to assume everything is okay, you know, nothing is wrong. And then when the symptoms show up, and I think that's when it's you know, maybe sometimes a little bit too late. So I think, which is why regular health checkups are important and which is why I guess the VMM matrix tool is important too, uh, to really do it regularly to show you, you know, where are the potential areas that your team can work on in terms of volunteer management, uh, what else you can do to build, to build up your health, to build up your volunteer management. Um, it's kind of like a safeguard to ensure that, you know, all your practices are on track, everything is okay and then you're doing well. So. For me, this tool, right, because we have done it uh, personally, so I think this tool uh, is really not to penalize you. It's not to say that if you are scoring like a one or a two, then you're not hitting like the highest mark, uh, then oh, you know, like, oh, jala, you know, kind of thing. I think it's a tool to help our organization gauge where we are. And then from there, then we can then be aware and then know, you know, where we should work on and to strive to do better, to serve the community uh, with excellence. And what I really appreciate about the tool after doing it, right, is the resources at the end. I think just now Ken shared about the resources. I think that helps because sometimes after you do, right, then you will feel like, oh, my results are like that. Uh, where should I go? How, what should I do? Where to seek help? And I think the resources are a great like, direction to point us towards you know, where we can start uh, helping ourselves in terms of water management. So, yeah. Thanks, Ling. So it's more like a health checkup, right? Not like O levels, A levels kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for thank you for that. Uh, thank, thank you, Pastor Andrew. Thank you, Sing Ling. Yeah. So um, actually earlier it was also mentioned in uh, New Hope sharing that you all made uh, intentional efforts to improve your quality management practices over the last year. Yeah. For example, uh, in terms of uh developing and strengthening your quality management framework. So I actually wanted to ask uh Sing Ling a uh, follow up question on that. Uh, why, why does New Hope believe so strongly in having robust quality management practices as part of the quality management strategy? Mm, okay, so so I think Pastor Andrew had three R's, right? So I'm going to like, you know, take a leave out of his book. I'm, I'm going to give you guys ABC. Uh. So <laughs> I think like in terms of uh, having robust quality management, I think A, right, is so that like by having the robust quality management practices, we can actually provide an A-star experience. For volunteers. So I think over the past two years, especially during COVID, a lot of things changed. And I think when we kind of relook at our volunteer management practices, when we saw the gaps and when we kind of beef it up, make it more robust, we realized that we were able to build up that organization readiness, which is actually one of the key areas like, in the matrix. And through that, through building up all these robust practices, then we were able to kind of uh, recruit, sustain our volunteers and to provide that uh, experience, that A-star experience that we could give them. Uh, and then like with that, uh, I think we kind of saw a jump in our volunteer numbers uh, over the past two years, uh, close to like three, four hundred percent increase and things like that. So because we had robust volunteer management practices that we uh, kind of stick to it, the whole team really tried to enforce uh, what we could to give volunteers the best experience that they can have uh, with new hope so that's a la. so i think b uh by having that robust practice it also helps to build longevity in my opinion so like in terms of like documenting down the processes i think that's also in terms of the when we rate ourselves right the difference between a rate uh, two rating and a three rating is in terms of the documentation i think documentation is important because uh, when you document practices it helps to provide clarity uh, and also longevity so so that information is not just like for example kept to me alone you know my 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 team they can just take it take whatever that is documented take the volunteer management framework take the volunteer continuity plan and they can just implement it uh, even if i'm not around and things like that so i think it helps to build that longevity uh, in the organization uh, and the last one c i think uh, robust volunteer management practices is a part of continuous uh, progression I think in order to grow, I think like what Pastor Andrew mentioned, change is the only constant. So in terms of that continuous progression, it's important to kind of take stock where we are at and to make sure that our volunteer management practices are robust enough uh, to keep up with the continuous change out there. So yeah, that's kind of what I feel. 
Yeah, thank you, Cindy. That, there are a lot of uh, important points now because, yeah, um, from time to time, I mean, we were already working on such lean manpower, right? Then when we go on leave, then how, right? And then uh, when, when there are maybe colleagues who need to take longer leave for whatever reason, I, I think it's very important that the whole team sets up such that um, the volunteers continue to have a very good experience and that their uh, volunteering experience with our respective agencies uh, don't stop just uh, dependent on one person, as you mentioned, yeah. Okay, uh, actually, uh, we have a next question, and then uh, I'm going to uh, combine two questions together for Pris, actually. Yeah, so uh, for Priscilla, uh, there are, there's a question on how the BMM matrix was developed, and then there's also a similar question, uh, whereby the question is, there was a previous BMM matrix in Excel format, which some agencies may have been asked to fill out before. Is there a difference between this version and a uh, previous one on Excel? Yeah, so uh, maybe Chris, you can uh, share your thoughts on these two parts of the question. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tingyi. Yeah. So, so to the second question, uh, indeed, um, there was actually a lot of work prior to this uh, current launch. As you can um, tell that we had previously, um, you know, um, out of that website, Gively website, we had, um, you know, also a series of questions. Uh, there was, in a way, like a pilot version where we had also engaged a lot of charities to actually start, um, started to use them. And we actually morphed that um, through, a, you know, a formalized consultancy process and also, um, you know, journeying and curating that with a lot of our um, identified um, social service agencies to, you know, um, come up with a more robust uh, volunteer management system that we think is a, a volunteer uh, BMM matrix that is ready to go to market and that's why we have uh, recently launched that um, so so that would be um, but broadly the frame will be pretty much similar as in we take reference from the volunteer management framework which a lot of you are familiar with on you know the, the different uh, domains uh, from organizational readiness culture and then the, the various parts so so that would be um, how it's developed it's also important to also note that um, this also um, developed uh, that complements the current op health framework. You know, some of you might be familiar that you know, and CSS has also recently launched our you know op health uh, framework for the social service sector. You know, to also help to diagnose the organizational health. Um, where this uh, VMM matrix comes in is that it's um, level two. You know, it complements the overall op health and going deeper into this particular track. Um, especially when the agency has done the op health and realized that there is actually maybe a gap. You know, in the volunteer uh, management, the people pillar. You know, especially on volunteer management and then with this particular tool, you're able to dive deeper into you know, the, the health checkup to know exactly what you will need to do, what you need to pursue, what is it you need to transform. And, and so anyone to what Pastor Andrew and Singing shared about this tool, we actually see this as a transformation process that a lot of uh, our charities and um, in fact, a lot of other organizations who are here today from our public agencies and um, you know um, uh, non-profits from other sectors are also here today. And as part of our volunteer management network, they, they, they can all use this to pursue a transformative state. And I I think that's what the, the C to what uh, Singling was talking about, which is really important. Um, other than, of course, meeting the current evolving complex needs of the present, um, we thought the very important point about embarking on this tool using a very data-driven, a very structured process is indeed to be able to help us be ahead of the game and uh, ahead of the game and always having that constant uh, pursuit of progress. Lah. Um, so likened to the ABC, um, you know, that, that Singling shared, uh, mine would be a little bit more pictorial, which is likened to if you embark on the volunteer uh, VMM matrix, you know, it's really likened to a a, a, you know, a tree, um, you know, you, you'll be able to help to grow volunteers to grow deeper roots in your organization when you have robust volunteer management capabilities because their experience is just, uh, you know, so, uh, a, uh, you know, A or, you know, really high scoring with your charities um, and that they, they would not want to leave and they just want to keep going on with you knowing that, um, you know, they feel so deeply and passionately and so intertwined with the causes that you're serving that they continue to grow roots anchoring the whole organizational tree deeply within the ground um, to be able to stay buoyant amidst all things that may come, COVID or not, pandemic, or any other types of pandemic or any other situations, they will help to anchor the organization deeply into the ground, augmenting the current staff, um, given that we also face challenges in, you know, recruitment, staff recruitment, and also, um, you know, um, the differ differing HR, um, you know, policies that we continue to also shape. But um, I think that, um, um, that I think most of you would know that the overall manpower capacity for our, for our sector would be staff uh, together with volunteers. So you have the volunteer force. And I give an example in the launch that DPM Ping, um, you know, was at uh, last week as part of the SG Cares Giving Week, um, you know, a series of activation event. Um, Phylos was one of the, the agency and they had about 27 staff, but they actually had about 2,000 volunteers. And that allowed them in FY21 to outreach to, um, you know, 27,000 um, clients and service users. So like into a tree where I've talked about the roots, 
when the volunteers also start to create impact, you know, you realize that your crown of your tree gets really super big and that covers a lot of your service users outreach that allows greater impact, more foods to be, um, you know, reaped and harvested. Um, so I think that that's, um, I think, where this VMM matrix will be able to help all, all of you in strengthening that in a very concerted manner. Thanks, and to the, yeah, oh, to the yes. Earlier question, sorry. Um, and so the earlier question um, on how is it developed? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So okay, I think I address yeah, yeah, that that one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, moving to another question actually. So there there are seven volunteer management areas in the BMM matrix. So uh, there was a question on um if most of the areas are weak or how do you decide on which areas to focus on first? I think this is um. A, a good question regardless of whether or not the scores are weak or whether they are strong. So maybe I can first advise Sini to take a step at that question and then follow uh, follow by Pris. Um, so how do you decide which focus areas to work on first as with your team? Mm, yeah, I saw that question. So I thought that was a very good question because I mean, we never know where we are at until we kind of check where we are at, right? So with this tool, then we realize, oh, if all seven areas are not ideal or not up to expectations, then I guess for, for myself or what I think for the team uh, that we have at for what we'll do is to really then dig deeper because I think every organization has their own strategic plans, has their own different like areas of priority and focus. So I think for us is to align back with our parent organization to figure out, okay, so if all seven areas are really not up to standard, then uh, as an organization, we can decide together which area to focus on first so that we can also help to hit the strategic thrust uh, within our own organization uh, and, and so and so forth. So I think for me, uh, if all seven areas are not ideal, uh, I will kind of definitely prioritize, but uh, in terms of which one to prioritize, I will kind of like look back to the bigger organization at large and to see you know where are the needs, where are the priority areas, then from there, then I will decide and choose. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think for me, um, likewise, if all seven are had equal scores, I think I might zoom in first on the organizational culture. Um, you know, as uh, Pastor, you know, um, Andrew shared also earlier. I think when you have the whole of organizations buy in, and that includes beyond you know our, our dedicated volunteer managers, you know, who are really re working really hard day in day out, you know, to to drive uh, um, the, uh, the mobilizing of volunteers as well as institutionalizing of best practices. But I think when you have the uh, buy in at the board level, at the senior management level, which includes CEO, you know, the the the, the senior management team of the organization, as well as other uh, program staff, center staff, and I'm so heartened, you know, sometimes when I see our volunteer management network, I actually see social workers joining, I see program. Staff I see center managers joining in and they're all here really very keen to soak out on volunteer manage management um, okay, um, content because they also interface with volunteers as well and I think they want to soak so the app, and I thought that was really very encouraging. And and speaking to CEOs like well, uh, Pastor Andrew and you know uh, Blossom Seed, the uh, CEO Association I just met recently, and that's for Life Brian. I also reached out recently, and they were just telling me the same way. They say that hey, everybody in my organization all will need to handle volunteers. So actually, they all need to have some form of knowledge, lah. So when you have that kind of a leadership. Um, the whole organizational buy-in, you realize that when you want to push out for a volunteer management system, when you want to push out, you know, and 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 talk about you know um certain volunteer continuity planning, you actually have a very ready state to operationalize the institutionalizing of all these robust volunteer management capabilities already. So so that's something that um you know for, for our organization's consideration to um have the board level buy-in, senior management buy-in and um, you know, the staff buy-in. And of course, um, 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 the next question you may ask is, you know, how then do we get board buy-in? How then do we get senior management buy-in? I think have the conversation with your, your CEO makes a, a world of a difference. A lot of times at the CEO level, um, actually they are able to do a lot of moral station even at the board level. For example, when Pastor Andrew talked about the volunteer management subcommittee, I'm sure it takes some, um, you know, conversations for him at the board level to, to do that, that that impact the value of volunteer management um, and, and where it, where it um, surrounds and envelopes and scaffolds the entire org strategy, the org outcome. So I think um, um, perhaps have that conversation with your CEO and, and think about how you know um, you would like to um, you know uh, address this and even at town hall levels, some CEOs also talk to that about staff and volunteers and to what Pastor Andrew shared, even in his regular meetings is being addressed. So, so that will be then infused into the DNA of all staff and that makes um, a lot of the work easier um, uh, you know, for our volunteer managers going forward. Mm. 
Mm, thanks, Chris. So actually, uh, now that you've thrown the ball back to Pastor Andrew and all the CEOs and EDs uh, of our, our agencies, actually, Pastor Andrew, I have a question for you. So there's this question about uh, what's the key in allowing and empowering staff and volunteer alike to support and work alongside each other, especially when staff may not have the experience of being supported by one. Uh, throwing back to, uh, like, uh, harking back to what Chris mentioned about uh, leadership support, I, I'm wondering whether you have anything to add in terms of um how to empower staff and volunteer to work alongside each other. And there was also a very uh, top-rated question about how uh, how you manage to get uh, corporate and skills-based volunteers to work so strongly and so uh, committed alongside New Hope. So maybe Pastor Andrew first, and then uh, Sinek maybe can add on afterwards. Okay, so um, how, how I gotten, I can tell you my story about how I gotten JP Morgan on board. Uh. I think for another organization, perhaps they have other corporates to join them. But I think you start with um, being very intentional, your goal. You know? what, what, what do you hope to achieve uh, or become? So um, for a long time, I have been dreaming, uh, dreaming having JP Morgan coming to support New Hope more than 10 years ago, but it happened now. Uh? So I, I remember I used to drive on the road and I see JP Morgan run. You know? Then I, saw, oh, I, I was hoping uh, in, my, in my heart, I prayed that hey, one day they will be supporting us in fundraising. And do you know what? One day JP Morgan, actually they are, met, they are, they are, they are, they are runners, they have a running club. Uh, they actually uh, every year start to raise funds for new home community services. You know? And then you know, uh, going beyond just using fun, they somehow, uh, I think, is is not answering prayer, you know. So I I I, uh, I think that uh, well, we all pray. <laughs> um, is is that uh, what you hope to what you hope to achieve? You know? uh, so that is something that I, I've been always thinking. Uh, who else? Who else can come and support the organizations? Uh, I think these kind of questions, and then think about what are the what are some options? Uh, some of the the corporates that you like to to bring in you know, the three Ps, uh, no? and then uh, take practical steps to reach out to them. So that will be my answer, uh, no? I think it, it has to be very intentional uh, to take the first step. Uh, and it's a process. Uh, it's not overnight. Uh, to, because you have to start with having coffee for them. With them, for example, you know, start talking about uh, your vision, your missions, uh, to excite them that this is a worthy cause uh, for them to be involved. Uh, and then to build that kind of relationship with them, uh, build trust. Uh, that is why we, we are very intentional to bring in the consultant to sit in our management meeting. Uh, it is, I must say it's uncommon, you know, but we are very intentional so that they give them a voice, uh, give them a voice, uh, you know, value them, and then they feel that, hey, we have something to bring to the table to support this, uh, and they are serious about this, and let them experience your culture, uh, meet your leaders. Uh, uh, I think that kind of relationship has to be there. Uh, because everything is about relationship. Uh, so people help you because they like you. They, they must like you. They must like the work that you're doing. And they find that it's a worthy cause to be involved in. Uh. So this, we, we went through this uh, process. Uh, yeah. Great. Thanks, Pastor Andrew. Then, uh, Sinai, do you have anything to add in terms of corporate and school volunteers uh, helping your agency? Right, so so I think like what Pastor mentioned, I think like he led by example uh, for sure. Like like he even had coffee with these volunteers on a personal time and things like that. So by leading with example, I think as staff, then when we look to him, uh, when we look at how he builds relationships, then uh, at the staff level, then we are able to emulate in that sense. And by then, the relationship has already been built. So when we come down to the ground level, when we meet these volunteers, uh, they already have a very good impression of uh, Pastor Andrew and, and the work that New Hope does. And it kind of like really eases us into the work. But to the other question about the part whereby uh, uh, bridging the gap about, about allowing staff and volunteers to work together, especially like let's say, for example, your staff has not worked with a volunteer before. 
and, and they don't have the experience of being supported by one. What is the key, right? So to me, so like how Pastor Andrew did it, he was there every step of the way. Like when we met with the, the volunteers from JP Morgan, when we have our leaders retreat, Pastor Andrew was there. He was that bridge. Uh, so I think for us, right, as um, VMPs, so for example, like the VM team in a particular organization. So for example, I want to uh, introduce volunteers to work with the shelter staff in New Hope. And they don't have the experience of working with a volunteer. So they might be apprehensive. So I think what the VM team can do is to be that bridge, to be there, uh, you know, the very first time when volunteers meet up with a fellow colleague, a fellow staff who has never worked with a volunteer before, we are there to really help ease that, that journey and to be there, to be that bridge. And it, it helps both the volunteers and also our internal colleagues that way to, to like, you know, that, I think that's the key la, to, to be that relationship builder and that garden of that relationship. So, so I think that's one key. That's great, that's great. Yeah, so uh, in terms of being intentional, so it's really relational from what I hear from Pastor Andrew and what I hear from Cindy is being relational and being uh, genuine, sincere and, and connected with volunteers, uh, whether, whether they're corporate volunteers or whether they're fellow colleagues um, and, and, and just to uh, dedicate this time and uh, work into uh, bringing them on board the vision and working together well, right? Okay, uh, great. Then after that, let me uh, move on to another question. So there's another question about um, experiencing a large stroke of uh, volunteers due to COVID. I think um, across a lot of agencies, this is a very shared uh, common experience due to this uh, pandemic. So the question is, despite putting in place one management practices, like there's still a drop in uh, volunteers due to COVID, is it really useful to put in place volunteer management practices? So uh, Chris, uh, I wanted to invite you to... Um, uh, Take a step at this question, please. Yeah. So, so um, generally speaking, yes, a lot of organizations, um, you know, um, uh, suffered quite a big drop, um, in their volunteers during COVID because of the um uh, SMM and you know the um how many numbers of volunteers, you know. So, so that is something that that happened to a lot. But we also observe and realize that those with stronger volunteer management uh, capabilities, um, you know, in existence, uh, for example, having a volunteer management system, even you know, they were able to perhaps be able to track and to note, you know, who has dropped off, you know, who to follow up, who to call back, you know, versus another one who's possibly maybe more manual tracking and they may be a bit lost as to who has come in and out. And I was speaking to one volunteer manager during COVID, um, you know, from a actually a pretty big, um, you know, um, organization, um, you know, um, quite reputable, but, but um, the, it was a new volunteer manager and actually when she came on board, she also realized that actually within the organization, there weren't all these practices that were institutionalized while they are a very big organization. So so I, I so I think um, it's something that is um, uh, uh, would help us to stand the test of time when you have robust volunteer management, but at the same time, I think would also help us to get up the curve post-COVID, you know, in that, um, you know, cutting back and pursuit uh, when we also are already having those uh, practices in place. And, and we have recently introduced a volunteer continuity planning guide, which we hope will be helpful, you know, in helping uh, everyone um, create that buoyancy, um, you, know, um, uh, you know, for future such uh, situations where we would know what we need to do um, so that we will never need to worry about a drop in volunteers, but having real redesign and deploying to different other areas to still be able to meaningfully engage them throughout the pandemic. And in fact, all the more so during pandemic, we would all the more need help yeah okay thanks Chris. okay so for my next question will be to all the panel uh all the panelists actually because uh, this question i think can be taken from multiple different uh, points of view so the question is if we do not have a volunteer manager just executives and support staff where can we get support and guidance uh to build up the foundation so maybe i can invite Singling and pastor andrew to take uh to take a this question then afterwards Chris uh to add on in terms of how, how to get support and guidance to build up on the management foundation. Uh, maybe can we uh, start with uh, Pastor Andrew first? Okay, so um, we had our first volunteer manager uh, actually not too long ago. You know, uh, I think I think the first time NCSS uh, you know, started this uh, direction, uh, having uh, supporting volunteer manager was Maybe seven years ago, not many, not too long ago. Yeah, around two one. Provide, uh, provide yeah. funding, provide yes. funding for SSA to have full time volunteer manager. And uh, I remember New Hope also applied, but we didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, so I think it was the second round that we gotten the funding to engage a uh, full time uh, uh, volunteer manager, 
And that means before that, we never had a volunteer manager. So when we don't have a dedicated staff, then someone else must do it. Uh, you know, and then of course, in New Hope uh, case, I was the one uh, who, who has been doing uh, that, uh, managing the volunteers. Not, not too difficult, uh, no? I think. Um, uh, personally, I think I, because I'm also very pastoral and I'm a champion connector, uh, people call me. So I, it's easy for me to do that. Uh, uh, so I think uh, for those who are smaller um, SSA that uh, do not have a volunteer manager, um, can also get a, a volunteer to do the job, you know. Uh, that means you can get a volunteer to become the volunteer manager to help you, you know. So uh, I think that is what I we were talking about uh, being resourceful. Uh, either you get a board member to, to do the work or get another volunteer or staff to stand in to do multitasking uh, to take that role of a volunteer manager beside uh, perhaps doing uh, a main job or doing case management to double up as a volunteer manager. So I think there is no one answer, but I think we can be creative. Lah, no? uh, yeah. So whether to look within the organization or outside the organization, find someone to help you. And then that is the start point to, and then gradually when there are resources, you can have that full time uh, volunteer manager. Mm, okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Master Andrew, for this uh, background. Cindy, uh, do you want to add anything to this point? Yeah, so um, I actually started on my VM journey not too long ago also. So I think for myself, right, how I get support and guidance, right, is really from the VRO team. Like I attended a lot of your webinars, uh, learning all the, you know, the pillars of a volunteer life journey, uh, recruitment, engagement, blah, 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 sustaining, and so on and so forth. And then all the different toolkits that you all have, uh, volunteer engagement toolkit, the, the uh, volunteer role redesign, and so on and so forth. I think all these are super helpful uh, for someone who is starting up. So you don't have to be a manager, you can be an exec, you can be a support staff, but like knowing where to get the resources, and I think the resources is right, they, they are right here like, with the VRO team. So I think that's something that's very helpful for me like, back then, also starting up. So yeah. Thanks, Cindy, for the affirmation of this. Yeah, so, so to also add um, to, to what was shared, um, I give an example. Shine, um, you know, there's also uh, you know, one volunteer manager, I think James, he was sharing with us that he recently to do his volunteer continuity planning um, guy, you know, because he also got to manage volunteers, he got to do other processes and practices he's also pursuing. So he cleverly tapped also likewise, like New Hope, tap on a skills-based volunteer, you know, to actually help to uh, a consultant from a consultancy company to also help to actually do up, um, you know, Shine's, um, you know, volunteer continuity planning guide. And it was actually done already, completed the whole process done um, that he even come in to share with other ch fellow charities as well. So uh, for consideration to tap, uh, you know, on other resources or even some of your maybe uh, uh, skills-based volunteerism or some of your volunteer leaders that you may have within your organization that you have already prepped and trained them up to have taken on higher responsibilities within your organization. You may consider if some of them may have that strategic thinking um, other than time and bandwidth uh, to be able to come and help you in all these practices. And, and, and that you know best, you know your volunteer, K, K, Y, V, you know, you know if they have the talents, the framing to be able to help to work on that. Um, and, and, and I think just the last point is that uh, for some of our smaller charities who are here today, um, don't worry about the, the dedicated volunteer manager. I think the key will be to focus on the, perhaps for a start for some of the, these agencies is perhaps uh, maybe whether do you even have the volunteer management capability building and function within your organization's uh, overall uh, corporate functions and whether it's a house at that point in time with uh, another department or multi, multiple head, um, it's all going to be a progressive state uh, as to any charity school. So it's still important to uh, at least start with uh, you know, having that volunteer management capability building, yeah, especially if you engage volunteers, um, yeah. Mm, thanks, Chris. I, I think there are indeed some, uh, some of our uh, attendees here are newer to volunteer management. So I, I, I hope that this uh, 
uh, it's quite a reassurance <laughs> to those of you in the audience because there are also uh, the questions of if having volunteers or volunteer management is new to us, how and where can we start on this? I think uh, throwing back to what uh, CNA was mentioning, uh, VRO is in NCSSL. We have a list of resources uh, that we will be able to share with you guys. Um, um, send some of the links uh, into the chat later on. And then in terms of um, volunteer managers stepping foot into this scene, uh, how to grow your own skills to support your organization in this area. So, Sinling, do you have uh, things to share from personal experience? Right. So, I mean, personally, how did I grow it up? Okay, so besides on the job training, I think uh, attending, so besides attending all these like webinars and stuff, I think speaking to fellow volunteer managers uh, or volunteer management practitioner really helps also in a way like, because I don't know what I don't know. So, after speaking to people, then I will know, okay, where are certain gaps in terms of my skill sets and then, you know, what are people doing that I am not? And what are some of the best practices out there? And from there, then I start to develop my own uh, growth plan, development plan, so that I know what are some of the skills that I probably am missing out on. And then I will work on that uh, on, a week, on a yearly basis, uh, doing my you know, work plan and stuff. So, so I think like speaking to people, knowing where your resources are, uh, these are some ways to help build up uh, skills uh, in a way as a volunteer manager. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, it like uh, you save yourself a lot of um growing pains, right? If you tap on the the knowledge and experience of some of the people who have come before us, um, yeah, by learning from both the good things or the or the difficult challenges that they've had to face over time, um, Chris, do you have any additional uh recommendations for resources or how uh volunteer yeah. managers can yeah. upskill? Yeah, so, so, so definitely invite all of you to join us on, uh, in our volunteer management network. You know, it is a very, um, you know, bustling uh, marketplace, you know, where we share a lot of industry best practices. Uh, it's held once every few months, um, you know, and we curate around topics that are emerging that's important. For example, how can you use marketing strategy to elevate your volunteer, you know, uh, strategy? Um, you know, uh, how can you then uh, better influence board members or, you know, uh, to form subcommittees in order to allow, you know, greater impact, you know, for all that organizations Doing. So we invite you to, to join us and if you are if you have not received any invites to any of our volunteer management network, it means that you may not be in our mailing list and do drop us a note after today's event so that we could include you in our database to send you our regular invites and we will also be having a volunteer management conference next year, the inaugural historic first in Singapore. So stay tuned for that and you know hope that we'll be able to also um, you know share some of the content with you. But other than that is uh, we also have peer mentoring programs as well. So I think if you are a new volunteer manager um, you know um, and you feel that you need support from fellow volunteer managers I think that's something that you could perhaps reach out to the NCSS team and VRO stands for volunteer resource optimization team um, you know um, uh, VRO is short and I think we'll be here to journey alongside you in every way whether at a professional development at all level um, other than the resources we have there are many other initiatives to surround and to support each and every one of you to grow in this area lab. Mm. Okay, thanks, Chris. Actually, I have a more specific to VMM question now. Um, we'll start we'll actually talk about quality management, then back to the matrix again. So this one's really about the frequency and, and uh, the perspective of uh, filling in the VMM matrix, right? So um, I think I'll direct both of these questions to Chris. So uh, firstly, if, uh, if the agency is also a volunteer center mm -hmm. uh, appointed by SG Cares, uh, do they need to submit once or twice? Um, and then the second one being, understand that it's good to review the volunteer management maturity matrix yearly. What if our agency implements a new program before the next review? Do they need to start the assessment again? Right. So one is in terms of VC versus SSA hat, and the other one is in terms of whether or not uh, you have to do it uh, alongside each program that has been launched. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So so if you are um, one of the twenty four volunteer centers that has been appointed by MCCY to um, help to galvanize uh, you know a, a more um, kampong spirited uh, town by locale and to bring everybody together uh, uh, galvanize them, uh, you need to do it twice. Um, thankfully, it's not too difficult as you can see. Uh, when can demo? Um, it's pretty much a, a simple uh, questions, very intuitive. Uh, thanks to the help of all our SSEs who help to validate the two as well. Um, so you need to do it twice. Um, um, the the reason being that so that we could then be able to. Um, you know, uh, do that benchmarking uh, for you as well, which we will also be sharing with you those benchmarks, which will be very helpful as well for you to know where you stand um, in, the, in the whole sector and where you stand across the 24 VC. So you can do it twice, but uh, just want to uh, rest assured it will not be a cumbersome process. Now. And to the second question, uh, not to worry about programs, because I think um, it's always as part of the evolving state also of the organization to have new programs. I think um, 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 ultimately this FEMM is on the state of the volunteer management. So, so I think uh, you, you may not have 
whether within uh, that one month or two before that launch or after the launch of the program, perhaps the volunteer maturity may not have changed that much. So we still um, you know, encourage you to still do on an annual basis so that at least you could see that differential across that span of time. Lah. So don't worry about the in-betweens, the uh, new developments or other things that may have happened. Um, uh, unless you're talking about maybe a new development of a volunteer continuity planning guide that maybe the organization has put together, you might already want to factor that in perhaps already in your, if it's really just one month away, then you might perhaps want to factor that in that, you know, it's actually, you know, of a higher state because it is really growing already. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. So I, I think uh, also to add on, uh, practices takes time to institutionalize. So, so uh, instead of rushing through, I mean, of course, it's good to prioritize it, right? But uh, there's definitely the people management, the change management aspects of things. So uh, don't, don't, don't need to worry about it immediately uh, doing it alongside the programs uh, as what Chris has mentioned. So yeah, so we, we can work on this. Okay. So uh, I really appreciate the fruitful sharing that has been going on so far. I really appreciate all the perspectives from the panelists. I would like to wrap up this section um, by actually inviting Pastor Andrew, uh, Prince and Xingling to share one key takeaway or encouragement for all of our attendees over here. So can we start with Pastor Andrew? Um, when we need help, we should ask for help, you know. I think that is, you know, uh, we, we get volunteers to help us. And also, uh, I like what the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. You know? So um, so people will come and help us when we seek help from them. So I go to NCSS for help. I go to my friends for help, go to churches for help. You know? So uh, I think that's where we can start. So we can make it. You know? I think uh, we all have to go through the journey, but we all can make it and become better and better. Start somewhere. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, then going on to Chris. Yeah, I, I hope that, um, you know, so thanks everybody for availing your time. We'll be taking a group photo later, so stay on for the group photo. But, but I just want to wrap up to, 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 to say that, you know, um, with a call to action to, you know, uh, invite and to encourage all of you, um, you know, to embark on the VNN matrix. Um, today's session is specially planned um, uh, for, for all of you to gain that deeper conviction uh, beyond the understanding and knowledge. But hopefully, you know, post this session, you'll feel more convicted to, to partake in this, um, you know, process. And if you like it again to the health checkup, you know, why do we do what we do? because we want to live longer because we want to live longer maybe because we want to take care of our families and we want to help other people around us so likewise likened to you know a vmm matrix as part of our organization do we want to accelerate the securing of a better future and a brighter tomorrow for the people that we serve if we can get them out of their circumstances much earlier with the help of the wider community uh, i hope that keeps us going to know um, that actually all the more we would like to build a stronger volunteer management capability to drive more volunteers to surround and support the programs in order to get those outcomes that we we, we, we are thinking like, which is a fast forwarding of outcomes of our service users. So that's that's my, my last thought. Yeah. That's great. Uh Cindy. Right. Okay. So I only have three words. My <laughs> tool. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. So, I think well, let's do it like like you know like you <laughs> like like because for someone who has actually personally done the matrix, right? I think it's really very helpful in like really identifying the gaps where we can work on and so that the team can really be better because we don't want to be stagnant uh, in an ever changing like uh workplace and ever changing uh, environment and stuff. So don't worry about your score. <laughs> like really, because when we first did it, we also a bit like taken kind of aback. Eh, how come we are like that? So, but the thing is, continue to work on it, continue to improve and to strive to be better. I think it's better now, better to start now than ever. So yeah, my tool out. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, amazing. So really about getting help, uh, about uh, knowing why you're doing this and after that, just do it. <laughs> yeah, and, and figure it out along the way, right? Yeah, thank you very much, all three of you, for your affirmations and encouragement for all Maybe our... I also want, yes, to yes. Thank, want to thank NCSS for this tool, Lano, because I think uh, uh, if, you know, I, I cannot think of anyone, like perhaps, the bigger SSA are able to come up with a tool like this, but uh, most of us won't have that resources to come up with the tools to help ourselves. So uh, I think that is what is so wonderful about NCSS all these years, helping the SSA like us uh, and that we can leverage on uh, the resources out there, uh, especially from uh, NCSS uh, to support us. So I think uh, I, I, when I look at New Hope, right, we are able to arrive at 
where we are is because we leveraged a lot on NCSS to support us, whether in terms of such a tool or funding uh, to get consultants to come in to help us. Yeah. So thank you so much, NCSS. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks on behalf of um, you know all in NCSS. Um, yeah. But uh, I think um, I I uh, just want to say that we are we exist to actually serve all of you. So actually, you all are our real bosses by right last. So I think having you succeed is what um it keeps us going. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, it's, it's our beneficiaries, our service users' life. So so we'll continue the journey alongside. And I hope that the VMM with everyone taking part, it also gives us a deeper insight to your state and to what singing said. Don't worry about the one and two and three and four because that also gives us a more uh, guided approach to how we can support and serve each and every one of you, which is really um, you know, um, at, 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 at a higher level of what we really want to do to, to keep everybody in a progressive state of volunteer management. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for all of this encouragement of Master Andrew and uh, Sidney. And of course, also Chris. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, for any of you who have more questions, uh, don't worry, we'll consolidate the questions um, if it has not been answered and then uh, we'll at the minute, the likely asked questions, which we'll share with you afterwards. We also have the volunteer management maturity matrix resources that uh, you can download. Uh, we'll share the QR codes or the links uh, in the follow-up emails as well. Okay, so uh, I would like to now move on to uh, the closing remarks. So I would like to invite Chris to say a few words for us in closing. Yeah, Chris, please. Yeah. So, so once again, thanks everyone for coming and um, you know, hot off the two uh, key campaigns uh, nationally, which I think some of you might be aware. Uh, uh, we can go to the next slide, uh, Jingyi. Um, I just want to thank and affirm each and every one of you for what you do every day. Uh, International Volunteer Managers Day uh, was just over, and I really thank each and every one of our organizations, including public agencies and nonprofits from other sectors, who collectively and in unison, you know, affirm and honor our volunteer managers uh, in Singapore for the hard work that they do in catalyzing national volunteerism. And this is especially um, important with Forward SG and with many other national strategies on top of our op level outcomes that we're seeking to achieve. So just want to uh, once again thank each and every one of you. And um, moving on to the next one, it's really um, you know, a call to action um, you know, to, to once again, as we shared earlier, for each and every one of you to be part of the VMM matrix. Um, and, and most of you would know that Forward SG has been, um, you know, it's ongoing, it's a national strategy um, to build lives and livelihoods and to you know, create a strong Singapore and different aspects across the six pillars and um, you know volunteerism is definitely something that's going very big uh, in, the, in the years to come there are some announcements that will be also coming up in, in next year uh, we just want to um, you know um, uh, encourage all of us to stay together and united as one VM community to continue to build each other up and VM and matrix will serve as a good uh, stepping stone you know a, a rocket to turbocharge you know our you know volunteer management capabilities uh, and lastly um, you know increasingly we are also you know having our resources um, you know even as we build them together with all of you, uh, we are increasingly, you know, having these resources shared within the sector so that, you know, Charity One will be able to share their resources with Charity Two. And we have been doing a lot of connect between even a public agency this, this morning, uh, you know, uh, to actually to another char charity to share, you know, on volunteer retention and some best practices. So the more we are doing that sharing as we also build up individually our, our, our level, um, you know, capabilities of volunteer management, I think we are also playing a dual role at the same time uh, to be able to uplift uh, someone else. And then together, um, the whole nation's uh, national volunteerism is going to be strong Strong, robust because um, we have all together collectively pursued progressive state in our volunteer management, including uh, there were some resources just for the information of everyone that were also shared with other countries as well. So, so let's continue to um, you know look forward to the future, knowing that we have each other and there will always be a support system uh, in NCSS and in, and in one another, um, you know, in this VM journey together. Yeah, so so um, that's all I have. I think uh, we would uh, like to invite each and every one of you to turn on your cameras so that we can take a group photo of our memories of learning and growing together in this VM capability building. It's never easy, but I think uh, when we do it together, it, it makes the journey much, much easier. And of course, I'm not, not alone. Lah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Pris. Uh, and yes, uh, can I encourage everybody uh, to turn on your videos as we uh, commemorate this session with a group photo together as well? Wow, we've seen your life stories, got three together in the camera. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, send my regards to Saliha. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I think some of you are actually turning on your videos now. So I'll just give you a bit, a few seconds while you make sure you look, see yourself inside. Yeah, remember to brush your hair if anything, <laughs> if there's any stray hair. Okay, I 
Then we do a, let's do a post V. With V stands for volunteerism, volunteer managers, volunteer centers, uh, volunteers, but it also stands for victory. And that's what we can all get for the lives of the people that we're here to serve. Okay. Okay, that's, that's great. There's yeah. quite a few of you, so do bear with me. Uh, okay, ready? I'll take the first page. Ready? Three, two, one. But because my first page and your first page might be a bit slightly different, so just hold there. I'm almost done. Okay, one more time. Three, two, one. Okay, I think I got everybody. Yeah. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, okay. So um, now before we go, uh, can we please get your help to fill in this uh, very short uh, Zoom poll uh, feedback form? Yeah, so uh, that we can better serve you uh, in our subsequent uh, sessions. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so you should be seeing it on screen. There will be no sharing of any correct answers. There's no correct answers, no wrong answers. Yeah, just uh, feel free to give us your honest feedback so that we can uh, better improve along uh, this journey of uh, sharing our resources with you. Okay, so uh, uh, in any case, uh, thank you everybody for taking your uh, afternoon out to spend this time with us talking about quality management and quality management maturity matrix. Yeah, so really appreciate uh, your attention, your questions. Um, read, uh, yeah, those are very thoughtful questions that we hopefully have uh, managed to address for you. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so as the questions are coming in, uh, just uh, submit before you leave. And thank you so much. Uh, do have an awesome week. Have a wonderful December with uh, this festive period. Uh, those of you who are having holidays, have an uh, enjoyable, fun, safe, and uh, wonderful time. Uh, and for those of us staying in Singapore, I uh, hope that this is a good time for uh, re energizing and spending time with loved ones and doing whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, so we are at the end of the session. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a good day. Okay.